Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. We'll rest in a moment of silence for personal reflection and then we'll pray our prayer of confession together. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave the only Son, so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. Our entrance hymn, O oh Lord, throughout these 40 days, 319, and I'll ask you to rise as the light is being brought in. Exodus from the wilderness of Sinai. 
soon, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the rod and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the word of the Lord come? The word of the Lord. Our response of psalm reading this morning comes from Psalm 95. I will read the odd verses and I'll ask you as the congregation to respond with the even verses. Come, let us sing to the Lord, let us shout for the joy to the rock of salvation. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. Your hands have passed the earth. I say to the hills are also The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people. Of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Oh, that today you would hear God's voice. There your ancestors tested me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Indeed, I swore in my anger, they shall never come to my rest. A reading from Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, Though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than, much surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled, reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But much but more than that, we even boast in our God, in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The Lord of the Lord. You may rise from the gospel acclamation.
gospel reading this morning is 37 verses long, so you may be seated for us to read. <laughs> so he came to a Samaritan city called Sakar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you the living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get the living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. And those who drink of the water that I will give will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will come in them. A spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband, and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one that you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on the mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus said to her, Woman, Believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on the mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such of those to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said to them, I know the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then, his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with the woman. But no one said, what do you want? Or, why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything that I have done. He cannot be the Messiah. Can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say, four more months, then the harvest comes. 
But I tell you, look around, and you shall see that the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows, another reaps. I sent you to reap for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered in to their labor. Many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay for them, and he stayed two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is true, the Savior of the world, the Word of the Lord. Wow, what a long read. So the scripture may be longer than the sermon this week. <laughs> Jesus chose to go through Samaria. There were other routes, and I think that his choice holds great significance. The city of Sakar is steeped in Israel history. For starters, the region is associated with God's promise to Abraham. It's connected to Jacob's land, and then this is the land that Joseph was buried. By the time that Jesus comes through the city and he rests at the well, there is much animosity among the Samaritans and the Jews. And this animosity is not hidden. It's an open book. From a historical standpoint, the hostility reached a climax about 128 B.C. When John Irenaeus, who was the high priest and the ruler of the Jews, he came in and he destroyed the city. He raised the temple. There is no wonder that there was still this bitterness in the air. The text of the time would be extremely shocking to the initial hearers. Jesus interacting with a Samaritan woman would have brought the world of men. They could have not imagined this occurring. Then, this is not a small conversation in story. It's one of the largest in the New Testament. I know that many times when we hear the story, we focus on the woman's history. I was tempted to address her story and give you some insight on the possibility that the marriages that are mentioned in this text are simply symbolic. However, I have decided to go into a different direction. I have given some insight on that symbolism in a video later this week, if you are interested. But what I want to focus on are the words of truth that Jesus gave the Samaritan woman and what she did with that truth. The truth comes in verses 25 and 26. So listen in to those words again. The woman said, I don't know about that. I do know that the Messiah is coming. And when he cries, we'll get the whole story. I and he, said Jesus, you don't have to wait any longer or look any further. So what did the woman do? She was shot to the core, and she left in a haste. She even left her water jug back at the well. She went back to the village to tell everyone she could about what happened 
and said, Come and see. Those in the village heard her words, and they followed her back to the well. You may recognize those three words. Come and see. We have heard them before. That was the recruitment call to the early disciples. And I'm named Samaritan woman becomes the most effective evangelist of John's gospel. Absolutely amazing. Her testimony changed the lives of her neighbors. They came to know the gospel because of her action. Her words, her testimony. Now I hope that you notice that she did not leave in haste from the get-go. There was some intense dialogue that occurred before she left. The intense dialogue even included her challenging Jesus, something that I think that we often overlook. So let's take a deeper look at how the conversation played out and then what I want us to take from it. Jesus invites her into this conversation. She immediately recognizes the society dynamics that are put into play, especially the barriers and the boundaries that are put in place. As she is a Samaritan, she is a woman, and is being approached by a Jew and a man. Yet, she does not hold back. The words of Jesus have challenged her thoughts and her beliefs. So she pushes back. She challenges his authority over and against the ancestors of her faith. So after Jesus responds to her pushback, she still has uncertainty, yet she goes. And we know that she is still holding on to this uncertainty because of the language that she uses when she witnesses to her community. Her witness includes a question. Do you think that this could be the Messiah? I love that she is witnessing about Jesus even though she does not have all of the answers. So here is what I want us to wrestle with and come away with about this interaction. The Samaritan woman demonstrates what can happen when we actually engage in conversation and questions about faith. There are various definitions about faith. But let me share with you Caroline Lewis's definition with you. And I think that her definition connects deeply to the Samaritan woman. She says that faith is about dialogue, growth, and change. Those are three powerful words. Dialogue, growth, change. Do we have the courage of the Samaritan woman? You do not have to have all the answers to invite others to come and see. Do you have an open mind like that of a Samaritan woman? If we hold so tight to our doctrinal constructs, we might miss a revelation. The Samaritan woman was changed. When we are willing to encounter Jesus, we can be changed as well. I am so glad that the Samaritan woman is included. Her inclusion is a radical inclusion. I mean, really, who would have thought that a Samaritan 
woman would be impossible. To place her in the same company as Peter, Philip, Nathaniel, is to watch a long-standing barrier of race and gender fall. And the reconciling message of Christ rising. The message of Jesus is truly for all. There are no more barriers, and because of that, we can and we should be inviting all through no limitations. So may we be people who love, invite, and welcome all to our spaces. Amen. Our hymn of the day, Jesus is a Rock in a Weary Land, 333 in the hymn book. If you want to follow along, and I'll ask you to rise.
sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of our creation. We pray for your church, bless partnerships with other Christians, and enter religious dialogue. Guide the daily work of denominational and congregational leaders. Strengthen our combined witness for the sake of the gospel. And the all experience your life-giving love. Merciful God. We pray for the universe. All creation teems with life. From the depths of the earth and seas of the skies above. Fill us with awe and reverence for the diversity and preparation of life, merciful God. We pray for the nations of the world, topple the dividing walls that separate us from our neighbors. Form us into your beloved community where diversity of gender, race, language, ability, and ethnic origin is celebrated and affirmed, merciful God. We pray for those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Be present with all who are lonely, and give courage to all who are afraid. Comfort those who live with chronic illness or other sicknesses. We take a moment to pause and lift up those in our hearts and minds silently to God. We especially lift up by voice, those on our prayer list, remembering in our prayers, Kevin, Sasha, Larry, Chuck, Dan, Gordy, Rich, Mary, Dick, Stacy, Elizabeth, Sandy, Kay, Dale, Gail, Daryl, Kay, Mike, and Ann. We also pray for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, Kay, Chelsea, Mark, Wade, Brad, Lincoln, Bruce, Joe, Nancy, Cheryl, and Dave. Merciful God. We pray for this congregation, especially those who are preparing for baptism. Nurture their faith and pour your love into their hearts. Inspire our community by their testimony to God's grace in their lives. Merciful God. We give thanks for the lives of all of your saints, their hope in you sustain life with the faith and service. Encourage us with the hope that they share in you, merciful God. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. May you share that peace with those who are around you. As we collect our offerings and tithes, the music hymn will be, Lead Me, Lord.
gifts, receive these and all of our offering as we present them in faithful service. For the sake of your gospel, prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Jesus Christ, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal feast that renewed in the gift of baptism. We may come to the fullness of your grace, and so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host in heaven, we praise your name and join in the unending hymn.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Embodied God, at your table, we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts, open to your promise. Empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. Rick will be coming up front with our first announcement. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm back. Um, obviously the second Sunday of the month, so Super Second Sunday Social. Um, you guys could have came in a little early if you missed it. Um, we try and do it in between first and second service, but... Once again, celebrating volunteerism within Bayview. Uh, and this month we are celebrating the Habitat for Humanity and the Restore. So 2023 marks the, the 30th year for York County Habitat operations. In their 30 years, they have built 48 homes. They have done 110 home repairs um, in Door County, impacting over 474 people, including 172 children. There are three areas of focus, um, <coughs> securing volunteers to restore and habitat build sites, fundraising to, to build these affordable houses in Door County, and the meal coordination preparation for the, uh, the build sites. Uh, the programs of the Door County Habitat Humanity are uh, the home construction, home rehabilitations, home repairs, and a ramp up of Door County. Um, a simple uh, a lease of uh, aluminum ramps which help people get in and out of their homes. Um, when something comes up quickly. Uh, opportunities available if you like to swing a hammer, uh, if you're a painter, or you just want to come to a job site and just learn. Um, I think they're always willing to take anybody. Um, uh, prepare a snack or meal for the, for the workers themselves, or help at the restore in various ways, uh, office and or uh, work in the restore, you know, just on the floor, or <coughs> things help in. If you want to contact, uh, if you want to volunteer or help, Interested at all, um, the, please contact the Restore or the Habitat Store at 920-743-2869. Once again, this is brought forward to us because of one of our members or multiple members have been volunteering for this. So to celebrate what we're doing outside of our church within the community, I think it's a great thing. Let's keep it going. Thank you. And I want to just highlight three announcements. The first one is this Saturday from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock, we'll be having a spaghetti dinner once again. You can either carry it out or you can dine in and we want to encourage you to come and invite a friend. This is a great simple invite for them to see our space while having beautiful and wonderful food and conversation. So 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. The next announcement that I want to highlight is that there is a new opportunity that is being presented. It is being presented on Wednesday, March 29th. It's called Food and Fun, and it's an opportunity and a time to build these intentional relationships. And so you can come to the Fellowship Hall for food, board games, card games, and just a time to be together. And then finally, I just want to highlight two of the bulletin boards that have underneath the uh, God's Work Our Hand is the bulletin board on the uh, rummage sale. So take a look at the rummage sale and what you might be able to donate or what time you might be able to help and assist. And then the sign-up sheet is like going fantastic for the Luther Immigration Relief Service. But there may still be a few spots available, so I want to encourage you to take a look at that board and see if you will be able to help with that. With all that being said, we come to our closing blessing and our closing song. Our closing song is going to be in your hymnal, 547, sent forth by God's blessing. Once again, 547, sent forth by God's blessing. I'll ask you to rise for the blessing and the song. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of the rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. <laughs>